I gotta hand it to you kids, finding that missing armored car after all these years. But uh, who are these two? Don't you recognize them, Sheriff? Why, it's Zeb and Zeke. They were the ones that hijacked the armored car and sunk it in the swamp. Then they waited all this time till it was safe to look for it, but couldn't find it. So they invented the Witch and Zombie Act to keep people away. While they searched the swamp with a metal-tipped pole. I get it. The pole would make a metallic sound when it hit the armored car. Yeah, and then they'd pull it up with the witch. They had us fooled for a while with an old smokescreen trick. Show them, Velma. Zeke the witch could appear and vanish as if by magic behind a cover of smoke. Watch. Well, they sure had everything figured out. But where they're going, I don't think their disappearing act will ever work. Well, what started out as a fishing trip sure ended in a dandy mystery. What's Scooby doing? Oh, he's still fishing. Aw, oh, come on, Scoob. Give up. You're not gonna catch anything in that bucket of water. That's one fish story no one will believe. <laughs> Mr. Weatherby, this ghost really doesn't need any introduction. As soon as we clean him up, I'm sure you'll recognize him. There. Look familiar? <gasps> Uncle Stewart. Like in person. He thought he could scare you into giving up the family fortune. That ghostly wailing was only a recording. And by a clever use of makeup, he made himself look old. When I came downstairs to investigate a noise, I saw Uncle Stewart's wig blow off. I knew he wasn't old. So he had to take you prisoner. But where does the Swami come in? What better way for a swindler to disappear? Uncle Stewart, why did you do it? Well, I guess he can explain it to the sheriff when he gets here. I bet you kids are starving. Groovy! Zoinks, that's for me! <laughs> hey, what's this? Scooby-Doo was here. The whole turkey? Gone? <laughs> well... Scooby-Dooby-Doo! We did it, Scooby-Doo. We did it. We did it? Booby-Doo! Just as we thought. It's the curator, Mr. Wickles. We've got to hand it to you, kids. We never would have suspected Wickles as the art swindler. Boy, it was a neat setup. He and his gang were switching their fake pieces of art for the real ones in the museum. And they made the fakes at night in a secret workshop behind the mummy case. That's why they had to get rid of the professor. He was the only one who could have spotted the fakes. Oh, my gosh, Professor Hyde White. We never found him. <laughs> It's Scooby-Doo with a shoe. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Professor High White! And all the time, it was Wickles who made that Black Knight come to life. Then there was no legend. Positively not. Wickles just used the story to cover up my mysterious disappearance. Somehow, he managed to get into the armor down at the train station. And like on the way to the museum, he made you disappear. Zoinks! He's alive! <laughs> Scooby-Doo! <laughs> Now, let's see who's really behind these bandages. <laughs> Dr. Najib! So it was apparent that Dr. Najib knew the secret of the coin. And after you kids left, he broke in, hoping to steal it. But when I surprised him, he had to tie me up in the shack. And when he couldn't find the coin, he knew one of us must have it. So he devised this whole mummy plan to scare us into giving it to him. But we wouldn't give it to him, and later we figured out the secret. The coin fits into the design carved on the back of the hippo like a key. This looks like the slot, 
Now let's see what it unlocks. Wow! A secret compartment with a glass beetle in it! Not quite a glass beetle. It's Anka's most valued treasure. A diamond scarab worth a fortune. So that's what he was after. But there's still one thing unsolved. What happened to the real mummy? Zoinks! The mummy! Oh, It was I found the mummy! Well, gang, I guess that wraps up the mystery. And the mummy, too. Keep going right up the stairs and don't stop! Hey, look at this snapshot. Here's a clue to end all clues. Take a look at our ape man. It's Carl, the stuntman! Yep, Carl decided to sabotage the picture just because I wouldn't let him play the lead. What a pity. It sure was clever of him to lock himself in that trunk yesterday. And tell that phony story about the ape man throwing him in there. Well, I can't thank you kids enough. Shaggy should get most of the credit. Where is Shaggy? <laughs> Oh, no, not again. <laughs> Looks like Shaggy wants to try for the ape-man role in the picture. Surprise! <laughs> but there's Scooby-Doo in the other chair. Surprise! It's the Scooby hat the ape-man was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> now there's real talent. <laughs> we sure fooled him, Scooby. We ought to be in the movies. Yeah. Ruby Dooby Doo! And so when the fog lifted, we spotted your beached boat and decided to investigate. But who is that? This? This is the end of the mystery. Well, well, if it isn't our old friend Bluestone the Great, an ex magician that's wanted in six states. But what is he doing on Haunted Isle? Well, you must have heard the legend of the Vasquez treasure. Everybody's after it. I get it. Then he used all the scary magic tricks to keep people away from the island while he searched for it. And when he saw us run aground, he wrote a threatening message trying to scare us away. Well, his scaring days are over. The Great Blue Stone is going to do a final disappearing act, courtesy of the local jail. There's one more thing. We figured out all those floating tricks. Watch. Look! No hands! See? Wired! But how did you walk right through a solid wall? One of my best acts. Let me give one last performance. Hold this rope. It was nearly an illusion, done with trick mirrors and a special projector. I could cast my image anywhere I wanted. And by stepping away from the mirror, it appears that I walk through walls. I must admit, Mr. Bluestone, you're a good magician, but a bad phantom. Man, I wonder if, like, there really is a treasure. Hey, that's Scooby Bark. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Scooby found something. Maybe it's the treasure. <laughs> 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 Nice going, kids. Uncovering these phony ghosts in their ghost ship is a job well done. Thank you, sir. Now, let's see whose glowing phosphorus face Redbeard really is. Mr. Mr. Magnus. Magnus! And I thought like the butler always did it. But who are the other two? Hired henchmen, I guess. Mr. Magnus was just about to lose his steamship line unless he came up with a lot of money. And what easier way than to hijack your own ships and sell the cargo? They had a pretty neat ghost setup, even down to the ghost sword operated by wires. Yes, but where did that mysterious fog come from? Simple, like dry ice. 
Dry ice? Sure. All they had to do was drop the dry ice over the side of the ship. And everybody knows when dry ice mixes with water, it makes a real spooky fog. Show them, Scooby. What? <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby brought in on a leash. They got him! But what's going on? Simple. He hypnotized himself. <laughs> <laughs> that man. He's Harry the Hypnotist. He had an act with us, but we caught him stealing and sent him to prison. Looks like he wanted to get revenge. As a ghost clown, he knew he could ruin your circus. He sure had us fooled with this balloon copy of the ghost clown. You see, he inflated it with this gas cartridge, and it disappeared when he deflated it. Well, it was great work, kids. Thanks to you, my circus will open this year after all. Shaggy and Scooby sure were mysterious about this big surprise they have for us. I hope Scooby doesn't try that high wire act again. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting that Hercules among strongmen, the man with muscles of steel, Samson the Super! If he can lift that, he is Samson. <laughs> There they are, Sheriff. Mr. Creeps and his partner, Mr. Crawls. They were trying to scare all the heirs off the island. Then no one would spend the night, and they would keep control of the fortune. First, Creeps pretended to be the Phantom and made it seem like the house was haunted. The cousins were scared away fast. Then they put dummies that looked just like them in the coffins. Bah! But that plan backfired. So did painting themselves like green ghosts. Well, where they're going, creeps and crawls could use a good lawyer. Here it is. It all belongs to you now, Scooby. One million dollars. <gasps> oh, no! Wouldn't you know it? All in Confederate money. How do you like that? We spend a night of fright for some worthless money in a haunted house that wasn't even haunted. Oh, no? Then what's that? Soinks! A floating haunted bone. Bone? I guess haunted bones are one thing Scooby's not scared of. <laughs> Way to go, Scooby Woo! Get him, Scooby! The caretaker from the castle reported there was some trouble up here. Who is this on the ground? Why, it's Big Bob Oakley, alias the actor. He's a master at disguises and wanted in seven states. That explains a lot. He's been haunting the castle to scare people away. He was after the Frank and Jewels, which are woven into that tapestry. Yes, and I'd have gotten away with it, too. If it wasn't for these blasted kids and their dog. Then you kids deserve a big thanks. I'll take Oakley and the jewel tapestry into custody. I don't understand how Oakley pulled that trick with the bat. Yeah, we forgot to ask about that. There it is, the vampire bat. Save my sandwich! Only a stuffed bat on a wire, you guys. Huh? 
Scooby, I always knew you were a little Betty. Booby, booby, boo! Now, let's see if our mystery ghost diver is really Ebenezer Sharp. It's not him. Then, who is it? I got it. Does this seaweed help remind you of that picture on Widow Cutler's wall? Who? Huh? Captain, Captain Cutler! Hey, listen to this, gang. Teenage sleuths solve boat hijacking mystery. Captain Cutler and his wife taken into custody by sheriff. That was some plan they had. First spreading the phony story about Cutler, and then stealing the yachts from the marina. That night on the beach, Cutler was storing extra scuba tanks in the graveyard of ships. Yeah, but like his diving suit got covered with that kooky glowing seaweed. <laughs> And that's where the glowing ghost story came from. Well, that closes the mystery. How did Scooby do that? I guess that's another mystery. <laughs> we well, sure thank you, kids, for unraveling this smuggling mystery for us. Oh. We just couldn't figure out how those sheep rustlers got them across the river without being seen. Floating them downstream in those barrels with the air hoses was pretty ingenious. First, they'd shear them here in the mill. Then they'd ship them off to the black market somewhere. Well, that's about it. And the werewolf disguises and the open grave were just to scare off intruders. Shucks, he didn't scare Scoob and me for a minute. <laughs> What's that? Oh, my gosh. Shag, and we'll see who he really is. All together, pull! It's, it's Professor Rain. Rain! You mean to say this whole caveman thing was a hoax? Not entirely, Sheriff. The two million year old caveman that was lost at sea was for real. And that's what gave Professor Wayne the idea for his scheme. First, he froze the dummy caveman in a block of ice out of the old fishing boat. Then he set it adrift, knowing it would float to ocean land. Then he melted the ice with an electric heater and made it appear that the caveman had come to life and caused himself and Ingstrom to vanish. Once Ingstrom was out of the way, Wayne would return, claiming to have escaped from the caveman. But why did he do it? I can answer that. He was after my invention, a revolutionary marine life communicator. Like, wow, you mean you can talk to fish with it? Oh, we go! Scooby-Doo! Scooby-Doo! <laughs> that invention is worth a fortune. And it would have been mine if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. Well, where you're going, you won't have to worry about meddling kids anymore. Well, that wraps up this mystery. Let's head for the malt shop. What are we going to do with old, tall, dark, and dummy? Like I got an idea. Huh? That was a clever idea you had, Shaggy. Yeah, like Scoob needed a dance partner, and he couldn't have gotten a better one. I gotta admit, Scoob has style. Yeah, he's all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we got him, Scooby! <laughs> nice catch, guys. Now to unmask this phony hide. And if our calculations are right, it should be held as a housemaid. Dr. Jekyll! So it really was Dr. Jekyll behind the ghost of high jewel robberies. It sure was, Sheriff. When all his crazy experiments failed, Dr. Jekyll decided to turn to a life of crime. 
But one thing he didn't count on was us following him into the marsh. And like when he figured he might be caught, he came up with the idea of framing Helga the maid. Shame on you, Dr. Jekyll. First he told us that phony story about the formula. Then he planted a bunch of fake clues for us to find that would make it look like Helga was the ghost of Hyde. Hmm. His plan almost worked, except that Shaggy found the suction cups, which turned out to be the real clue. But when he tried to get them back and keep Shag from telling, everything backfired, and he ended up caught in one of our traps. But why were the suction cups such an important clue? Show him, Scoob. Okay. Dr. Jekyll had to use the suction cups to scale the buildings. If Helga was really the ghost of Hyde, she wouldn't have needed them because she was an ex-circus star. Hey, like, look! Scoob thinks he's a circus star, too! Oh, no! Scooby's gonna fall! <laughs> I gotta admit, that's some act! scooby <laughs> Nice work, Scooby! You caught the creeper! Now bail us out of these hay bales! The creeper? <laughs> It's Mr. Carswell, the bank president. How about that? I got your message and went right to Carswell's house, kids. Carswell wasn't there, but I found the bank guard tied up in the basement. Old Carswell had a pretty slick scheme going for a while. I'll say. Since he was the last one to leave the bank every day, he would just fill his briefcase with money, relock the safe, and leave the bank as usual. Then, later that night, he would return disguised as the Creeper and make it appear that some sort of a phantom was robbing the bank. However, unknown to Carswell, the guard installed a concealed infrared camera which took a picture of him robbing the bank. And then when he found out, he went after the guard to get the incriminating pictures. And this is it. We told Carswell about this paper, and after we left, he must have figured out what it was. And that's why he chased us trying to get the paper. Watch. The flame will tell. There's the creeper. Well, I'll be. You kids have certainly wound up all the loose ends in this case. Blasted meddling kids. Well, now that we're rid of the creeper, why don't we creep on down to the malt shop and join the party? Like I'm ready. Hey, we got one passenger too many. I think you'd better take him back to his real mother, Scoob. <laughs> oh no, Scooby's become a mother hen all over again. <laughs> well, it looks like you captured the wax phantom. But who's who? The two small ones are Shaggy and Scooby. And the big one's the Phantom, whom they so artistically captured. In his own wax. And now for the unwaxing. Oh, oh. Okay, Scoop. You gotta be good. Now, Mr. Wax Phantom, time to find out who you really are. Hey, you're chipping them down to regular size. Mr. Roger Stevens, the TV station manager. And I wish you'd have minded your own business. Well, in this case, it's police business. Like we thought old Waxy was really a ghost. Or at least old Grisby was behind it. No, Shaggy, that's just what Stevens wants us to think. While he escapes to South America with all the money he embezzled. Sure. Stevens knew of old Grisby's threat to bring the Wax Phantom to life. So he used the Phantom disguise. Then Grisby would be blamed for everything, including Stevens' disappearance. I'll take him now, kids. Thanks. Hey, Scoob, aren't our wax statues the greatest? Yeah. Just what are you fellas going to do with those wax dummies you made? I like simple. Next time we have a mystery, those dummies can go instead of us. There's only one problem. 
how to tell one pair of dummies from the other. <laughs> very funny, very funny. Yeah, very funny. <laughs>